Happy Beauty International School presents. The emotional impact of hair loss. Although the medical community does not always recognize hair loss as a medical condition, the distinguished felt by many of those who suffer from abnormal hair loss is very real and all too often overlooked. Results from a study investigated of bald and balding men show the compared to men who had hair bald men perceived as less physical attractive by both sexes, less assertive, less successful, less personally li likable, and older by about five years. A study how bald men perceive themselves showed that greater hair loss had a more si significant impact than modern hair loss. Men with more severe hair loss experience significantly more negative social and emotional efforts and are preoccupied with their baldness, more some affect to conceal or compensate for their hair loss. Abnormal loss is not as common in women as it is in men, but it can be very traumatic and devastating for women who experience it because of studies indicate women have a greater emotional investment in their appearance. Many women with abnormal hair loss feel anxious, helpless, and less attractive. They may think that they are the only ones who have this problem. They also tend to worry that the hair loss is a symptom of serious illness and sometimes try to digest it from everyone, even their doctors, which is usually a mistake. Over 63 million people in the United States suffer from abnormal hair loss. As a professional hairstylist, it is likely that you will be the first person that a hair loss sufferer will confide in. So it's important that you have a basic understanding of the different types, bless you, of hair you. loss and produce some services that are available. So you see the um, diagram here where where the hair, um, the vullus hair, the short hair, the non-pigment hair, and um, the hair follicle, and the terminal hair, and the long, thick pigment hair. Now, types of abnormal hair loss. Abnormal hair loss is called alopecia. The three most common types of abnormal hair loss are andro androgenetic, alopecia, 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 aretina, and postpartum, postpartum alopecia. Androgenetic alopecia, also known as androgenetic alopecia, is hair loss that is characterized by a terminal hair that is converted into the vellus hair. It is usually the result of genetic, age, or hormonal changes that cause terminal hair to minimize. Androgenetic alopecia can begin as early as the teens and is frequently seen by the age of 40. By the age 35, almost 40% of both men and women show some degrees of hair loss. In men, androgenetic alopecia known as male pattern baldness and usually progress to the familiar horseshoe shape fringe of hair and women it shows up as a generalized thinning over the entire crown. Androgenetic alopecia affects millions of men and women in the United States. Alopecia retina is an autoimmune disorder that causes the affected hair follicles to, to be mistakenly 
attacked by a person's own immune system phase. It is highly unpredictable skin disease that affects an estimate of 5 million people in the United States alone. This hair disorder usually begins with one or two more small, round, smooth, bald patches on the scalp and progress to total scalp hair loss known as alopecia totisless or complete body hair loss called alopecia universalis. Alopecia retina occurs in males and females of all ages, races, and ethnic backgrounds and most often begins in childhood. The scalp usually shows more obvious signs of inflammation, skin disorders, or diseases. Postpartum alopecia is temporarily hair loss experience at the end of pregnancy. For some women, pregnancy seems to disrupt the normal growth or cycle of the hair. There's very little normal hair loss during pregnancy, but then there's sudden and excessive shredding from three to nine months after delivery. Although this is usually very traumatic to the new mother, the growth of the cycle generally returns to normal within one year after the baby is delivered. Hair loss treatments. Of all treatments, they are said to counter hair loss. There are only two products, minoxidil and finasteride, that have been proven to stimulate hair growth and are approved by the FDA for sale in the United States. Now, with those two um, products, if you stop using it, you go back to that hair yeah. loss. Yeah. Mm hmm Monoxide is a topical applied to the surface of the body, medication that is put on the scalp twice a day and has been proven to stimulate the hair growth. It is sold over the counter as a non-prescription drug. Monoxide is available for both men and women and comes in two different strengths. 2% regular strength solution and 5% extra strength solution. It is not known to have any serious negative side effects. The most well-known minoxidil product on the market is Rogaine. Phenoxidide is an oral prescription medication for men only. Although phenoxidide is more effective and more convenient um, than minoxidil. Possible side effects include weight gain and loss of sexual function. Women may not use this treatment and pregnant women or those who might become pregnant cautious not to even touch phenoxidil tablets because of the strong potential for birth defects. In addition to the treatment described above there are also several um, surgical options available to treat alopecia. A hair transplant is most common. Permanent hair replacement technique. This process consists of removing a small section of the hair, including the follicle, papilla, and hair bulb from an area where there's lots of hair, usually in the back, and transplanting them into the broad area. These sections grow normally in new locations. Only licensed surgeons may perform this procedure and several surgeries are usually necessary to achieve the desired result. The cost of each surgery can range from 8000 to over $20,000. I'm in the... <laughs> hair stylists can offer a number of non-medical options to counter hair loss. Some salons specialize in non-surgical hair replacement systems such as wigs, toupees, hair weaving, and hair extension. With proper training, you can learn to fit color, cut, and style wigs and toupees. Hair weaving and hair extensions allow you to enhance a client's normal hair and create a look that boosts self-esteem. See Chapter 19, Wigs and Hair. Disorders of the hair. The following disorders of the hair range from those that are commonplace and not particularly troublesome to those that are far more usually dis um, distressing. Hair scalp analysis. All, su all successful salon services must begin with thorough analysis of the condition of the client's scalp, the client's hair type. Knowing the client's scalp condition and the client's hair type allows you to prepare and make decisions about the results that can be expected from the service. 
Because different types of hair react differently to the same surface, it is essential that a thorough analysis be performed before all salon services. Hair analysis is performed by observing using the sense of sight, touch, hearing, and smell. The four most important factors to consider is hair analysis are texture, density, porosity, lenticity, and other factors that you should also be aware of hair growth pattern and dryness rollers or hair texture is the thickness of the, the diameter of the individual hair strand hair texture can be classified as coarse medium or fine and can vary from strand to strand on the same person hair it is not uncommon for hair from different areas of the head to have different textures Hair on the nape, back of the neck, crown, temples, and front hairline of the same person may have different textures. Coarse hair texture has the largest diameter. It is the strongest than fine hair. For the same reason that a thick rope is stronger than a thin rope, it is often more resistant to processing the medium of fine hair. So it is usually required more processing when you are applying products such as hair lightness, hair colors, permanent waving solution, and chemical hair relaxers. Medium hair texture is the most common texture and is the um, standard to which other hairs compare. Medium hair does not pose any special problems or concerns. Fine hair has smaller diameter and is more fragile, easier to process, and more um, susceptible to damage from chemical services than coarse or medium hair. As with hair cuticle analysis, hair texture can be determined by feeling a single dry strand between the fingers. Take an indi individual strand from four different areas of the head, front hairline, temple, crown, and nape and hold each strand securely with one hand while filling it with the other thumb and forefinger of the other hand. With a little practice, you will be able to feel it, um, the difference between coarse, medium, and fine hair diagonal. And so they're giving you the breakdown, the um, images of what coarse hair looks like, giving you a breakdown of what medium hair looks like, and then also what fine hair looks like, okay? And so when you want to test the hair texture, it's showing you how you can test. Te Average number of hair on the head by hair color. So hair color. So when you look at blonde hair, the average number of hairs on the head. So blonde hair holds 140,000. Okay, strands. Brown hair holds 110,000. Black hair holds 108,000. And red hair holds 80,000. Okay. Now here, density measures the number of individual strands on one square inch, okay, of scalp. It indicates how many hairs there are on a person's head. Hair density can be classified as low, medium, high, also known as thin, medium, or thick, or dense. Hair density is different from hair texture. Individuals with the same hair texture can have different densities. Some individuals may have coarse hair texture. Each hair has a large diameter. But low hair density, a low number of hair, hairs on their head. Others may have fine hair texture. Each hair has a small diameter, but high hair density, a high number of hairs on their head. The average hair density is about 2,200 hair per square inch. Hair with high density, Thick or dense hair has more hairs per one square inch. And hair with low density, thin hair has fewer hairs per one square inch. The average head of hair contains about 100,000 individual hair strands. The number of hairs on the head generally varies with color of the hair. Blonde hair usually have the highest density and people with red hair tends to have the lowest and shows hair density by the hair color. Now, hair porosity is the ability of the hair to absorb moisture. 
The degree of porosity is directly reduced to the condition of the cuticle layer. Healthy hair with a compact cuticle layer is naturally resistant to being penetrated by moisture and the referred to hydropolic. Porous hair has a raised cuticle layer that usually absorbs moisture and it is called hydropolic. Sounds the same. Hair with the low porosity is considered resistant. Chemical services performed on hair with low porosity requires more alkaline solution than those on hair with high porosity. Alkaline solution raise the cuticle and permit uniform saturation and processing on the resistant hair. Hair with average porosity, hair with high porosity is considered overly porous and is often a result of previous overprocessing. Overly processed hair is damaged, dry, frittle, and brittle. Chemical services performed on overly porous hair requires less alkaline. Solutions with a lower pH will help prevent additional overprocessing and damage. The texture of the hair can be an indication of hair, uh, indication of its porosity, but it's only a general rule of thumb. Different degrees of porosity can be found in all hair texture. Although coarse hair normally has a low porosity and is resistant to chemical services in some cases, coarse hair will have high porosity, perhaps as a result of previous chemical services. You can check porosity on dry hair by taking a strand of several hairs from different areas of the head, front hairline, temple, crown, thumb, and forefingers of the other hand, from the end to the scalp. If the hair feels smooth and the cuticle is compact, dense, and hard, it is considered resistant. If you can feel a slight roughness, it is considered porous. If the hair feels very rough, dry, or breaks, it is considered high, highly porous and may have been overprocessed. So, um, let me ask you, why do you think thinner hair has more porosity composed to coarse hair? Coarse hair has a thicker like cuticle? Yeah, right, exactly. So it's easier to, you know, it's harder for the hair to absorb the liquid yeah. because of the density of the hair, the um, um, the density and the um, texture. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we go into the elasticity of the hair. The elasticity is the ability of the hair to stretch and return to its original original length without breaking. Hair elasticity is an indication of the strength of the side bonds that hold the hair's individual fibers in place. Wet hair with normal elasticity will stretch up to 50% of its original length and returns to that same length without breaking. Dry hair stretches about 20% of its length, of its length. So this is why when I say to y'all, you know, when you're cutting hair, you have to make sure it's either all wet or dry mm -hmm. because the texture changes when it's half wet and half dry. Now hair with low elasticity is brittle and breaks easily. It may not be able to hold the curl for wet setting, thermal styling, or permanent waving. Hair with low elasticity is the result of weak side bonds that's usually are a result of overprocessing. Chemical services performed on hair with low elasticity requires a milder solution with a lower pH to minimize further damage and prevent additional overprocessing. Check the elasticity on wet hair by taking an individual strand from four from four different areas of the head, front hairline, tip of crown, and nape. If the hair, bless you, stretches and returns to its original length without breaking, it has normal elasticity. If the hair breaks easily or fails to return to its original length, it has low elasticity. So they're showing you the hair in the diagram here, how the hair porosity, um, this is high porosity. So it's overly porous hair. 
Then they're showing you how you can test the porosity of the hair, testing the hair for this porosity and testing the hair for the elasticity.